it can be really hard to tell the difference between what is just out and new and flashy and what is actually useful. And AI especially is making that hard. And on top of it, you now have ships stacking on ships from different competitors in the same vertical. Let me give you two examples and I'll try and help you sort of develop a framework to pull those apart and actually understand what's useful. So first, OpenAI shipped Canvas, which a lot of people are comparing to artifacts from Claude and the Anthropic team. But they're not the same thing. And this is part of what makes it hard in the age of AI to sort of disambiguate the utility of these is that how do, you, how do you know the difference when they're not quite the same thing? So let me give you a few examples of how they're not the same. One example is that there's a little slider that you get in the Canvas space in OpenAI that allows you to automatically transcribe your code into different languages. Claude doesn't have it. Another example is that the chat GPT Canvas is deliberately designed to integrate effectively with V0 uh, from Vercel. Claude doesn't necessarily. Another example is that you have the ability to do partial edits. So it doesn't fully re-render the code. You can just focus on a piece of the code and edit that piece and come back. And I'm saying code a lot because that's clearly what OpenAI and the team had in mind. Although they do say it's helpful for documents as well. And I would believe that just based on a little bit of playing around. Artifacts from Claude is really designed to be helpful for quick rendering of answers to a particular problem in the side of the chat. So you can do um, a React component support, which by the way, ChatGPT doesn't have. You could write things in React. You can even graph stuff with Mermaid, which ChatGPT doesn't have. And it will render the components as a preview in a way that so far seems more helpful than ChatGPT is doing as far as preview goes. It's hard to know, especially because a lot of these differences are fairly ephemeral. I think that we're likely to see, you know, catch-ups from both teams, right? Like I would not be surprised to see the Claude team immediately begin to invest in easier translation of languages. I wouldn't be surprised to see the Canvas team roll out better graphing support shortly. I think one of the things that I want to call out is that the underlying model drives a lot of the utility here. And so if you like how ChatGPT 4.0 is writing code, you're going to probably like Canvas better. If you like how Art, uh, Claude Sonnet 3.5 is writing code, you're probably gonna like artifacts better. And that's sort of that underlying model drives the software. I will say one of the things that is not going to be quite as easy for the Sonnet 3.5 team to copy is this idea of partial edits. There's some foundational work that was done there to enable the model to look at a particular piece of the writing and only touch that, but do so in a contextually relevant way. So it doesn't, for example, break the code or break your chain of thought. That's hard work. That's gonna be tricky to copy. And that is one of the competitive advantages right now that Canvas has that will take a little bit of time for others to catch up to. So that's an example of Canvas versus artifacts, but you can see this tradesy thing, this like new ship on top of old ship thing on other verticals as well. So for example, Replit shipped a product called Replit AI that lets you just type in and just say, this is what I want to build. I want to build, um, you know, a bingo app and it will just build it for you. And it is very limited in terms of the languages it use, uses and it goes straight to deploy. Well, just yesterday, Stackblitz released a project called Bolt.new which is designed to do the same thing that Replit is doing, but it does it faster. And so it just goes through and develops code and runs it and gives you an app extremely quickly. Now, I don't know if they preloaded some of these prompts so that they look really good, they may have, but I will say the app does feel faster. It feels like a bolt from the blue, right? Like it feels like they're delivering on the promise of just kind of getting you through the process of building an app even faster. And that reminds me that we continue to see innovation in the space where like the coding piece of the work is getting smaller and smaller and thinner and thinner. And the focus on what you want to build is getting heavier and heavier. And so the intention needs to be there to build something effectively. So by next week, 
there will be more ships in this space. That is how fast this is moving. And if you're wondering, which tool do I pick and why? My suggestion to you is to look at your own workflow. Look at the languages you use if you're coding. Look at the models that you prefer. If you're writing documents, look at the models that you prefer. Look at why you have those preferences so you don't just blindly prefer a model, but you think about what is the literary style here that I prefer, or how do I like to iterate and does this model support that effectively? Like the partial edits come to mind. Um, and then at that point, if you were able to accomplish your goal successfully with that model, work on getting a repeatable motion with the model and the app layer that you've got, and then have targeted radar out for changes in the landscape that enable you to go back and make your workflow better. And so if you say, look, you know, I like to write code and I like to edit that code in pieces, which just about everyone with a big code base does, right? <laughs> um, and I also like to make sure I have easy deploy. Great. You can keep an eye out for apps that are going to support integration with larger context windows. You can keep an eye out for apps that are going to support even easier editing than what you see in chat GPT canvas. But it's your knowledge of your own developer flow that is going to get you there. It's your knowledge of those steps that's going to get you there. I call that smart chunking, like you're chunking out the steps, you're thinking about them intentionally. And that is what it, what's going to enable you to flip to other tools effectively. So I hope you enjoyed this. It was just a quick review of a couple of new tools. I've been seeing this problem for a while of tools just stacking on top of each other and it's really hard to disambiguate them. I think the key is workflow and understanding what you do and picking out the pieces of the tools that align with your workflow. And if there's enough of them, you can use that tool for a while. But it's really your workflow that stays steady. It's not necessarily the tool and it's the model that drives the utility of the tool. So it pays to keep an eye on the model. All right. Hope you enjoy this. I'm sure there'll be more AI news tomorrow. Cheers. <laughs>